let's talk about thrillers. Again, the last time I did a roundup of thrillers, I ended up running out of batteries and running out of room on my card, so I kind of just gave up after reviewing six books. So now I'm going to re review the rest of the thriller books that I didn't get a chance to review in that video. First let's talk about Janet Ivanovich because I have read a ton of her books recently. Janet Ivanovich is definitely one of those authors that I go to when I'm looking for something easy and fun, something I know will put a smile on my face. Although I will say it's definitely more of a guilty pleasure read because there is some stuff in her books that are definitely problematic and stereotypical in a in an offensive way. I don't think if she came out with the Stephanie Plum series now that it would do nearly as well as it did back in the day. Because there are definitely a lot of harmful stereotypes. That being said, my grandma is the one who showed me that the that being said, my grandma's the one who showed me the series back when I was like 15 or 16 and so reading them always makes me like feel closer to her and so it's something that I really enjoy doing. So during lockdown I read the 25th, 26th, and 27th. Oh and I think the 24th too. So four books in the Stephanie Plum series so I'm now caught up in that series. <sighs> Stephanie Plum is a bounty hunter who just gets into all sorts of shenanigans while also being involved with this, these two guys, Ranger and Joe Morelli. Joe Morelli is a cop, Ranger is an ex-bounty hunter, and now he has his own security firm. It's just all full of wacky hijinks. It's a comedy, it's an action, and it's fun. The series has very much lived out its welcome. It is not great anymore. Some books are better than others. Out of these four, there was one or two I think that I enjoyed. The other two were really not good. There was one that like had more paranormal stuff, which she usually relegates to the Between the Numbers books and spin-off series. It was weird to see it bleed over into the regular series. And then there was the 26th book, which was entirely just set up for the 27th book, which I thought was going to be the end of the series, but it wasn't. But I did enjoy the 27th book more than I've enjoyed some of the other ones up till this point. The next thing by Dan Ivanovich I read was Dangerous Minds. This is the sequel to Curious Minds, I believe, which they are a Night and Moon novel. They're a pairing that very much feels like Sherlock Holmes meets Stephanie Plum, I guess. This series is definitely a lot more over the top than Stephanie Plum is. Which is saying something because Stephanie Plum is pretty over the top but the, the action sequences and the mysteries in this one are a lot more over the top and they always like expand throughout the world instead of just being in one place in Trenton, New Jersey in the Plum novels. It has a little bit of an Indiana Jones vibe going for it and overall I enjoyed it. It's not close to my heart or anything. I do kind of wish the series had continued. I believe there's only the two novels. But it's cute, it was fun, it was mindless. I gave it three stars. I'm not really going to tell you the star ratings for the four Stephanie Plum novels because I think they were all either two or three stars. Also by Janet Ivanovich, this time joined with Lee Goldberg, is the series The Heist. I've read the first and second novel in the series The Heist and the Chase. These are, this is about an FBI agent who works to catch this criminal who is a like criminal mastermind thief type as well as like flirty playboy and she eventually catches him but then she ends up having to work with him to bring down other criminals that the FBI can't catch through regular means. This is another series that like I'm not gonna say it's a masterpiece but it's definitely fun and I've enjoyed listening to it on audiobook. The audiobooks are really good and it's just kind of easygoing and an enjoyable listen when I'm kind of between things or I've just read something really depressing and I need something to kind of use as a pick-me-up. You've got that same Janet Ivanovich banter and chemistry between the leads, but I think Lee Goldberg adds probably some of the action pieces because it's not something that I've seen Janet Ivanovich do a ton of. And we all know that I love heists, so this works for me. And I gave both of those three stars. Another thriller mystery crime situation that I read was The Likeness by Tana French. I love this series by Tana French. This is the second one in her Dublin Murder Squad series. I love that they are such deep character studies of the detectives that are the main characters in these novels. In the first character, er, each book in the series looks at 
a different detective, which I think is such a great idea because it means that you never know what's going to happen to the main character because like they could actually be in danger, which is something that is completely new in the crime genre or just any series really. You always know that the main character is going to survive because they have to show up in the next book. Where in these, where in this series, like anything can happen and I love that. It just means the stakes are that much higher. In this book in particular, the main character, Cassie Maddox, hears about a girl who is dead who looks exactly like her and is carrying an ID with her old undercover info on it. So she decides to go undercover as this dead girl and try to figure out who murdered her. It's kind of a ridiculous premise, but like, I loved Hannah French's writing so much. She, it's so introspective and the vibe of this book was very like dark academia but like these kids that she's investigating they don't really go to school but she just kind of hangs out with them and forms different bonds with each of them and you truly do start to wonder where the book is going because I feel like it could go any way. I will say that the mystery elements aren't necessarily the strongest part of her novels. I feel like they're usually pretty obvious. It was super obvious in the first book. This one was slightly better but it was still pretty obvious but the character work and the writing more than makes up for that. I gave this five out of five stars. A book I read recently was Little Boy Blue by MJ Arledge. I have raved about this series by MJ Arledge. This is the fifth I believe book in the D.I. Helen Grace series and this one has kind of ruined the series for me honestly. I really did not enjoy this one. There was an instant where it just kind of took a turn for me and really pissed me off and they wrote their way out of that but after that it made it more possible for me to see the flaws in this series. One of the things I don't often like about crime series is that you don't get the, to know the main characters enough. They just kind of become this personalityless crime fighting robot characters and that's kind of how Dia and that's kind of how Helen Grace is. And now that is part of her character. It just it's starting to grow a little old considering this is the fifth book in the series and we still know pretty much nothing about her as a person. The part that really ruined this book for me was that they started focusing on a trans character and the way that MJ Arledge wrote about this character was just so gross and the way they painted this character and tried to make them into a villain, the whole thing was like it just completely put me off to this series. And like I said, they did write out of that and went a different route but it was just stop using trans people as plot points, it's not cute. So. I don't know if I'm going to continue on in the series because I'm just kind of over it. The problem is that I, of course, own the next three books in the series, so. I gave it this one and a half stars. It sucked. The next thriller I read was An Anonymous Girl by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekinen. I read The Wife Between Us by this author duo and I really, really enjoyed that one. I didn't enjoy this one as much. This one was about a girl who kind of fakes somebody else's identity and takes this survey because she's going to get money by taking the survey. The person running the survey gets really interested in her and ends up asking her to continue to come back and join this sort of social experiment study situation. She does because she needs money but she's also starting to get really interested in whatever this service is about. Now my issue with this one mostly was that it actually reminded me a lot of their other book, The Wife Between Us, and I think that if you read one first, the other one's just not going to work as well. I think they tackled a lot of the same issues, a lot of the same themes, and so it just doesn't work as well the second time around for me. I gave this book 3 out of 5 stars. I just found the character work in The Wife Between Us a lot more interesting to me personally. The next thing I read was One by One by Ruth Ware. I read The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware and really didn't enjoy it and so I don't know what I was expecting going into this one but I actually thought it was okay. I seem to like it more than a lot of other people but I definitely didn't love it either. I just don't know if Ruth Ware's writing is for me. This 
is about a tech company that has this corporate retreat and basically they're there to talk about this big buyout. Most of the company wants this buyout to happen because of course it's going to make them all millionaires. But the leader of the company doesn't want this buyout to happen because, I, I don't know, he enjoys running the company or, or something. The app part is ridiculous. It, it has to do with, it's basically Spotify, but you log, you pick somebody's Spotify, whether it's like someone you know or it's a celebrity, and then you're listening to the same music that they're listening to at that exact moment. Sounds stupid, sounds like something I would never use, but sure. There's a lot of like business talk and a lot of talk around this buyout and around their app. Didn't particularly care. I don't think any of the characters were delved into enough for any of them to be interesting. I know a lot of people said they like hated the characters. I didn't hate the characters. I just didn't really feel anything for them because they were just kind of like two dimensional. The mystery or the twist, the reveal as it were, didn't really work for me in the sense that I wouldn't say I saw it coming, but the reason I didn't see it coming was because I'd had the thought, oh, this is what's going to happen, and then I was like, no, 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 that's way too predictable, that can't be it. Because that is literally the first thought you have, is like, oh, it's this person. And and then you kind of talk to your, yourself out of it, because like, who would go with the most obvious answer? Well, apparently Ruth Ware would, because that was the answer. So that was not great. There was a ton of action afterwards and I thought that part was interesting. I liked that part because it was kind of like survivalist. Who will win? Who will get through this? I don't know. Whatever. It was fine. I gave it three stars. It was not memorable in the least. I don't think a ton of people are going to love this one but I definitely don't think it's as bad as it's been made out to be. Another great ride was The Harpy by Megan Hunter. This is about a woman who's been cheated on by her husband and now they have this agreement where she gets to hurt him three times as her revenge. I like the idea of this. I thought that it explored kind of the everyday, kind of the everyday mundane cruelties that many wives have to put up with. All the work and effort that they put into their everyday life and only to be told that like they're too boring now or they've lost their interest. So I thought that was interesting. I like the idea of revenge pretty much always. I just always enjoy that in a story. And at first I was really, really enjoying the book, but then I feel like it lost steam a little bit towards the end. And considering this book is only 200 pages long, that's not great, but I did enjoy it. I gave it three stars. I thought like the dark nature of it was cool. Um, I didn't totally understand the metaphorical shit near the end. That's not my bag, but it was alright. I kind of wished it had been expanded on. I wish that it had gone darker because I always wish that. Another middling thriller that I read was What She Knew by Jilly McMillan. This is kind of one of those typical thrillers about a woman whose child goes missing. I listened to this on audiobook and this is kind of like one of the first thrillers I read during this period of time where I wasn't filming and kind of just thought it was okay. I knew pretty quickly who had done it and what had happened and I did turn out to be right and so I don't really have a lot to say on this one other than it was fine to listen to if you want something to pass the time but honestly there are so many better thrillers out there and like if you've watched any sort of crime show you have seen this done before. I also read The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Parkins Gilman, which is a classic thriller. It's very, very short. And it's about a woman who is undergoing some type of stress and she gets kind of like not locked in her base, or not locked in her attic, but like the husband like puts her there and she just kind of like stares at the wallpaper and essentially goes crazy. I gave it three and a half stars. It's good for what it is and it's an interesting read. It has a very good like sense of atmosphere and it builds tension really well. And it's one of those things that I think is very fundamental in the thriller genre so I think it's nice to kind of like know where those classics started. And I think obviously it also says a lot about what women were put through back in the day whenever they were having any sort of depression or anxiety. 
Another book I read was Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts by Kate Raculia. I don't know how to say her last name, sorry. I loved this one. I I didn't know what this was going in. I had some weird preconceived notion that this was a middle grade and I was most definitely wrong. <laughs> I was listening to this on audiobook because if I am gonna read middle grade I prefer to listen to them on audiobook and all of a sudden she started talking about sex and alcohol and I was like wait what the fuck? <laughs> so I started to read it as, as an ebook and I just absolutely love this. I love the character so much. She is she signs up for this contest that is happening in the city where this guy has died and he wants to leave all of his money to whoever can solve this mystery. And it's like a fun game sort of mystery. It's not like who died or whatever. She embarks on this competition with um, her best friend as well as a guy she meets and her next door neighbor who's like 12. The cast of characters was really fun but Tuesday Mooney as a character was definitely the most interesting one. She's the type of character I love, kind of Veronica Mars-esque, like mixed with maybe a little bit of Wednesday Addams. I really enjoyed it. Um, I will say like near the end it gets a little bizarre, but I still just like overall loved the tone of it. I love any sort of mystery thing. I definitely think it's like the big sister to Truly Devious. If you want something a little, if you want something like Truly Devious but a little more adult, I would say this is a good one. And I gave it four and a half out of five stars. And then I decided to finish some books that I had previously DNF'd. I don't know why, I just decided this would be a good idea. I guess because I picked them all up on audiobook, it seemed easy. The first one was City of the Lost by Kelly Armstrong. Now this was a book that really frustrated me. I DNF'd it because I was absolutely adoring it and then it kind of took away all the things I loved and shoved a bunch of things at me that I didn't quite like. Essentially this was about a girl who has to upend her entire life and go into witness protection where she basically resides in this tiny town that is completely off the map and it's all former criminals or people who are in witness protection who live in this town that is completely secluded from the rest of the world. She's going to be their new detective because they need someone to kind of help their crime problem that they've been having in recent years. I didn't care so much about that but because I was really enjoying her life back in New York a lot. She had a love story going on that I was really interested in and then they kind of just like took that all away and shoved her in this new town and I was less interested. But as an audiobook it worked. I don't know if I would go back to the series. I do enjoy the love interest who is like another detective that she works with. She almost ended up in a love triangle and then they backed off that which I kind of think I would have preferred the love triangle because she I was hoping this would be more of a slow burn romance because that's what I enjoy but it was definitely more of like instant attraction and they immediately got together in the first book so I don't know. It was fine but another crime series book I read was Good Girl Bad Girl by Michael Robotham. I'm terrible. Um, oh yeah I gave City the Lost three stars. I also gave this book three stars but this one I actually think I am going to pick up the next book for sure. So this one I also listened to on audiobook. I had been reading it physically and then I stopped and switched to audiobook because I thought this girl was gonna have superpowers or something and I was like I'm not interested in this so I'll just finish it through audiobook but I was kind of right kind of wrong but anyways it's about this detective character who ends up going to this child detention center I guess and finding this girl who has had nothing but bad luck She's been in tons of foster homes, she's ran away from them, etc. But she has this ability to sense whenever someone is lying. And it's something that he wants as a, a psychology, I guess he's not a detective, he's a psychology major or something that the detectives go to for help. And he once wrote a paper on these people who could detect lying just innately. And so he's very interested in this girl and he offers to um, house her in his house because she keeps running away from this detention center and it's not going well. So I just love like their dynamic because it's very like odd couple I guess because she's such like a rebellious teenager. I mean she's I think she's 18 and he's like this professional dude who's trying to get his shit together. It's just a fun odd pairing while they also try and solve crimes and I enjoyed that he's into psychology because I always think that's interesting. So I definitely think I'm going to pick up the next one. I loved both of them as characters so it worked for me. 
The other one I previously DNF'd and decided to finish was You Should Have Known by Jean Hamp Corlett. So this was turned into a TV show recently called The Undoing, starring Nicole Kidman and Hugh Grant. And I have no desire to watch that, not gonna lie, but I kept hearing about it, like everyone was talking about it for a while, and I was really scared that I was gonna get spoiled for the book, and because I previously bought the book, so I was like, well, I'm gonna finish this before I get spoilers. The problem is the book is so dense. Like, there is little to no dialogue in the book. It is just entire paragraphs of her inner, like, thoughts. It's just a lot to get through, and I just like found myself getting through it so so slowly so I finally just got it on audiobook um, from Audible and listened and it was so much better as an audiobook. It was actually enjoyable as an audiobook. I liked it so so much more because the story itself was interesting. I just couldn't get through the dense text. It's about this woman who is a psychologist and she's writing a book called You Should Have Known. And it's all about how when you see red flags in a relationship you have to listen to them because 10 years down the line you're going to realize that like you're with this horrible person that you don't want to be with. And she says like the entire point is to listen to your gut. Because you knew these things from the beginning, you just chose to ignore them. Anyways, of course, this book is going to be about her husband and how she should have known because he's a monster. This was not really a thrilling thriller. This was very predictable, but once again, I just really enjoyed the character work. I will say it took a while to get there. Like the first 40 or 50% was such a slog, like just get to the point. It was really only in the last 10% that you truly knew what was going on. It was a three star. And then another thing I read was a comic, which was the adaptation of um, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. I read the original book and did not love it at all. I just thought it was so boring and also kind of confusing, but I do love the movie. So I always thought Lisbeth as a character was fascinating and it always annoyed me that the books don't focus on her more and so I just didn't want to slog through like hundreds and hundreds of pages just to get little bits and pieces of her story. So I saw that it has a comic book adaptation and I decided to read those. So I read all three of them and I really, really enjoyed them. I found that they were a perfectly acceptable way to intake that story. Sometimes like the adaptations can just be confusing because they're trying to get so much information into little pictures with very little text, but this totally worked. I gave those four stars and I really enjoyed them. I will never go back and read the books because I just don't want to, but it was a good story and I enjoyed it. So I believe that's all the thrillers I have, thank God. <laughs> So I hope you like this video and I hope to come back again soon. Bye.